above God's name channel back with another last day's video. You're not going to believe what I found in the word this time. Let's jump into this. And sorcerers, serpents, and seducers in the uh, J and J, you know what, we'll call it the Jimmy and Jimmy. Let's uh, take a look at uh, some prep here for us. And it is fingerprint lifting. What is fingerprint lifting? Fingerprint lifting is the process of securing copies of fingerprints that are left on a surface, which are invisible to the naked eye. Science 101. And let's go to Science 201. Fingerprint lifting. Oil from your finger leaves a fingerprint on the surface. Lifting the fingerprint from the surrounding surface allows you to see the previously blended pattern. This is Science 201. We're getting a little deeper here. Now, note uh, I have oil and I have finger highlighted here. Um, interesting. Oil represents the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. And then finger uh, being the finger of God. So we are looking for God's fingerprint that's left by the oil mark of the Spirit of God in the Word of God. Let's keep going here. And what we have next is our principles that we're going to examine today from the Word of God as we get into this. The Word of God is Spirit, John 6, 63. This is the oil part. And therefore, things occur in the Word of God deeper than the surface shows. If you look at the surface of something, you're not going to see the fingerprints necessarily. Uh, but once you lift, you will see them. And this is the finger of God, leaving an invisible print only seen when lifted in the word of God. Remember, man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. So he's known for that inward portion, that spirit portion. And unfortunately, most Christians are surface-level Christians. They're not looking beyond the blend. They're looking not to lift things that need to be seen. But we do that on this channel all the time. Here we go. Deeper than the surface. I want to give you an example first so you can practice lifting fingerprints of God. And then we're going to apply it to what we're seeing today in the Jimmy and Jimmy. Uh, you know what? Look at John 19, 34. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came out. Uh, I'm sorry, came there out blood and water. Okay. That looks on the surface like that's it and that's all. But watch what happens when we only look on the spirit or the heart of this verse. We're going to lift the fingerprint of God right out of this verse that's been there all along. Ready? Here we go. And it looks like this. So when we fade the other letters, when we lift the spirit's fingerprint, the oil mark, the finger of God, his fingerprint, look what we have. We have the word spirit in this verse and blood and water and if you say well that's random no it's not random at all actually it's the fingerprint of god who in the perfect finished bible in english has done this so to prove it we're going to compare first john 5 8 and that will show you that there's nothing random about this at all spirit blood water see how spirit is blended in that passage but when we lift the fingerprint this is what we see spirit blood and water now here's first john 5 8 with our john 19 34 verse right here deeper than the surface spirit blood water john 19 34 and then first john 5 8 a spirit water blood and there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit and the water and the blood these are both written by the apostle john and the fingerprint has been there all along because the finger of god by the oil of the spirit has left it there the finger of god writing the word of god 
the King James Bible, the oil residue leaving his fingerprint. All right. Now we're going to get into our Jimmy and Jimmy revelation, which is, this is unbelievable. When I saw this, I about fell out of my chair. Um, here is 2 Timothy chapter 3, the whole chapter. I'm not going to read all of this, but I want to remind you because it is a famous chapter. This know also that in the last days, remember we're doing a last days video here, perilous times shall come. And then Paul goes into listing about 15 different traits of these end time uh, people who are going to blend in the church. Uh, they're going to be everything from unholy to lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. It just goes on and on and on. And then he refers back to Janus and Jambres, who are the magicians who withstood Moses at the time of the Exodus with their uh, magician witchcraft. And you remember the showdown that went on between Moses and the magicians. Uh, they're named here in 2 Timothy 3 as Janus and Jambres. And these are called men who are reprobate concerning the faith. Uh, they are called seducers it goes on and on and then of course we have our famous all scriptures given by inspiration of god passage and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction and in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect through the furnished unto all good works now when we take this famous chapter and we just lift the fingerprint of god from this surrounding blended passage it's going to take us into 2020, 2021, exactly. Watch what happens when we lift the fingerprint. And then I'm going to break it down even deeper. I was amazed when I saw this. Oh, there it is. Janice and Jambres, no longer Jimmy and Jimmy. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. J and J, seducers. Okay, now this is by no way a coincidence that in the last days, we have a very famous J and J trying to seduce the world and particularly God's people, All right? Now, look at this. Let's just put it on one straight line. And let's take a look at these sorcerers, serpents, and seducers. Janus and Jambres, named by God. In 2 Timothy 3, connecting 2 Timothy 3 with the Exodus back in the Old Testament. Seducers, get the you-know-what and get $100. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. J and J, seducers. Now, you might think, okay, this is just a uh, happenstance. No, it's not. Remember, the oil... Mark is leaving the fingerprint of God, the finger of God, writing the word of God, revealing things on different levels for different times. This is very prophetic that we have a J and J linked with the last days, perilous times, and that we in these last days, perilous times that we're experiencing are faced with a J and J ourselves. But it gets deeper. So hold on. Watch this. Here's your Janice and Jambres right here. Here is your modern day sorcerers, Janice and Jambres. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Janice, and look at the arrow pointing up from Janice to these two men on the right and the company that they work for. The company's called... Jansen. Jansen is the pharmaceutical arm of Johnson and Johnson. Jansen and Janice, as in Janice and Jambres, the sorcerers, Jansen, Janice is the same exact letters rearranged. See? See it right here? Janice Jansen. Mm -hmm. This is a spell. This is witchcraft from the magicians, from the sorcerers, 
and it is from the spell book by rearranging these letters. Unbelievable. It's going to get crazier yet. Unbelievable. Here's the sorcerers. Now look at Exodus 7.11. When we go back to Janus and Jambres in the Old Testament, it says, Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. So indeed, they are sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. So the sorcerers here, this sorcery, which of course is going to be Hebrew in the Old Testament, when it grows into the New Testament and becomes Greek, we know it as pharmakeia, which is pharmaceuticals. So Janus and Jambres from the Old Testament, sorcerers, linked with pharmaceuticals in the New Testament. And this is witchcraft, potions, formulas, Jansen, Janus. You can't make this stuff up. Next. They are linked with serpents as well. So Janice and Jambres on the left. And take a look on the right. We have in exhibit A, a hypodermic needle. And in exhibit B, a serpent's fang. Pretty hard to tell the difference. So let's look at these serpents in Exodus 7, 12a. This is the very next verse. For they cast down every man his rod, and they became serpents. This was the great showdown, throwdown. It took place between Moses and the sorcerers. And as they would throw down their rods, they would become serpents. So we do see that they're linked, Janice and Jambres, with sorcery, with seducing, because of 2 Timothy 3, and serpents. Unbelievable. Now get a laugh at this. This Janssen company, here's their logo. Janssen and Jambres. See that logo? Uh, doesn't that look like the serpent fang? It's this right here. Looking like this right here. But you're not going to believe their description of their logo. This is insane. This is what they say about their logo. It's an image of the letter J. True that. We see that. Composed of two elements and resembling a dolphin. You can't make this stuff up. Uh, who in their right mind is going to look at this logo right here, this blue logo for Jansen, and say, oh, that looks like a playful dolphin. Look, you make the decision. You can believe what you want. Sorcerers, serpents, seducers, or sorcerers, dolphins, seducers. This right here, the serpent, and this Jansen or Janus logo, they look identical. Look at the eye right here in this serpent. And look at here. Right there. Uh, they look identical. And they look nothing. Nothing at all like these playful dolphins. No one in their right mind is going to look at this logo and ever come up with the conclusion that what you're looking at is a dolphin. So, <laughs> you go ahead and decide what you want to believe. But I clearly see with anointed eyes the fingerprint of God showing us without any question prophetically that Janus and Jambres is this Jansen and today's pharmakia last days perilous times that we are faced with the only J that I need to get shot with is the James shot that's the King James shot that's it for me. How about you?